against his opposite number, Jeff Danu, 6'2", junior. Last fellow named Daniel, I remember, was about 19, uh, I'm going to guess about 1976 or 7 when Windsor played Montpelier. And, and it might even have been his dad. I don't know for sure. I didn't have a chance to check it out. But tip control by Byrne Burton. Last time the Bulldogs were on the auditorium floor, they were here to claim the 2006 Division II crown. They did it over Fairhaven. And do not adjust your set. The final score of that state title game was 24 to 22 as Fairhaven slowed it way down. First shot of the night, Andrew Sires got two. These are two clubs with very storied basketball history in Vermont. Burn Burton out of Manchester. Of course, Windsor, big, big, big sports community. That Windsor shot no good, and Cowens cleans it on down. Cowens well out away from the hoop. Is moving in down low underneath is, uh, that's Cowan, or Doug Anton rather, 32. Cowan, 31. Shot is missed and the rebound down to the Windsor Yellow Jackets. They will throw it away. So Burren Burton will take the turnover the length of the court against full court pressure. Windsor has a history of not having a lot of size, but having all kinds of speed and a great amount of tenacity. Burn Burton, a lot of speed, a history of good shooting. They try to go to Sire underneath, but he saved it. Comes back out on top with Tulander underneath, cutting through his Sire, and Sire's got two. Four nothing, Burr Burton. There goes Buckner. Windsor in the road green. Into the middle, Danielle. That one wouldn't go down. They go down low to Cowan underneath. He'll put it up off the glass, doesn't drop. Pull down Windsor and Danielle. Fast break pass ahead of the pack. Trying to get it up was Tenzi. Couldn't get it to fall. And first foul of the night. So Hamill picks up the first personal foul. That's on Windsor. And it'll be the Bulldog ball. Inbounds to Doug Anton. Anton and Cowan are part of that big front line for Burr and Burton. He'll kick it outside for Tulander. It'll move inside for the big guy Cowan. Shovels it off. Bank shot is good underneath for Sire. Sire's got all six of the Burr and Burton points. It's Andrew Sire six and Windsor nothing at this juncture with five and a half minutes to go in the first. And Windsor will work it back outside. Set it up again. Here's Buckner. Knocked out of bounds off the fingertips of Zach Cowan. 5.20 left in the first. I have a strange feeling this one's going to be a very fast-paced ball game. Inbounds going for the steal was Cowan, didn't get it, and Lenz puts up the shot, doesn't go. He'll get it back, though. Kick it off on the side for the two ball for Hamill. Joey Hamill rings it up. Joey Hamill makes it a 6-3 ball game. First points for Windsor. It cuts that Burn Burton lead in half and a traveling violation on Dylan Baker. So Windsor to put it in at midcourt, trailing by three, just under five minutes to go in the first quarter. Tansy started in. He's picked up by Sire defensively. They come back outside, and Hamill brings it around and takes the shot. No, but he will draw the foul. And this one will go against on Tulander. And Hamill will get two shots. Did he say three? Was he in three-point land? We'll see what happens. And here's one. We will see. I didn't think he was in three-point land. I thought he was inside the arc, but I could be incorrect. I've been wrong once before. 
No, it's only two. Yeah, I was wrong before, Mac. It was a 1958. It was a Friday. It was late in the day. I thought I was wrong, and I wasn't. But. Sire, Bulldogs. <laughs> Here's Tulander. He'll take the shot. They'll leave him alone. He missed it. Tipped up by Anton. He gets it back, fires it up, and gets it. So the 6'4 senior used his height to good advantage. Makes it an 8 4 lead. Another three attempt by Windsor. This one off the mark, off the hands of Lenz. And here come the Bulldogs. There's Cowan's shot. Nope. And on the rebound, a whistle. Over the back, Byrne Burton, Andrew Sire. That'll be the second team foul on Byrne Burton, and when, uh, Byrne Burton wants to call the timeout. 4.06 to go in the first, 8-4 to four Bulldogs. So Byrne Burton used their first timeout. That was a 30. And Windsor will take it the length of the court. It's an 8-4 to four lead for Byrne Burton. Approaching the midway point in the first quarter. Clubs still kind of feeling each other out, seeing where the weaknesses may lie. Here's Tansy for Windsor. Now Tim Lenz. Lenz kicks it back outside to Hamill. They'll work it around for Buckner. Now Tansy started in, lost it. The Bulldogs will pick it up and get it up quickly. Here's Tulander being watched carefully by Buckner. Got it away though. Baker. Inside for Doug Anton. Anton lost it. Told it away by a little guy. Tansy took it away from the big fella. Outside three ball, Lenz, nope. And Anton, the flat footer, check that uh, Cowan. Flat footed rebound. Tulander in traffic, pounded, doesn't get it, put it up and in though for Cowan. 6'6 six, six senior, Johnny on the spot for the putback. And it's a 10 to four Bulldog lead. Way outside, Daniel, nope. Two fifty-three to go in the first, 10 to four, Burr and Burton. The clubs met twice on the regular season and split. Second one was a two-point ball game. Inside, putting the shot up and not getting it to drop was Tulander, but he will draw the foul, go to the line for a pair. He's a 6-1 senior. Boy, Byrne Burton can put some size on you down low. They got Zach Cowan at 6-6 and Doug Anton at 6-4. They're both on opposite sides of the parallels in the middle in the white shirts. But Tulander will get a pair with 2.42 to go in the first. That one's in and out. I think we ought to keep a stat, Mac, uh, put you to work and keep a stat of shots that bang in and out or uh, roll off the rim and go off. it would be a little more uh, effective than red-headed left-handed rebounds in the paint. But <laughs> What'd you call it, the twilight zone? <laughs> Two-lander, one of two. Seven point spread for Byrne Burton at 11 to four with 2.38 to go in the first. Watching Windsor open up the middle. Nobody in a green shirt under the bucket for most of the time. They'll go down low for the layup and a nice move underneath by James Aldrich who snuck into the lineup when I wasn't looking. Aldrich gets his first bucket of the night. Off the pine for a pair for Aldrich. 2-12 left in the first. 11-6, Byrne Burton. And the Bulldogs go down low to Cowan. Underneath Tulander, nice fake. He's traveling, though. A little bit too nice. Did the old shuffle. Turns it over, and Windsor will take it length of the court. Substitute checking into the ball game now for Byrne Burton. Jeff Towsley checks in. So Windsor down by five at 11 to six with 1.53 to go here in the first. Here's Aldrich on the baseline, swatted away. Oh, and uh, Cowan got a hand on it. Saved nicely by the Bulldogs. 
Down low for Cowan, back out for Tulander. Baker on top as the Bulldogs move the ball around quickly. Baker splits the defense, banks it, doesn't get it. And Windsor the rebound. That one pulled down by Blake Wright. Ahead of the pack for the shot by Buckner. No. Danielle over the back on the rebound, and that was a big league over the back. Danu over the back. So for Jeff, that will be his first. <clears throat> and that's three on Windsor. 122 to go in the first. In for Anton. His pass to Baker, say, tipped nicely by Windsor, but out of bounds. Or is there a personal foul? A personal foul called on Byrne Burton as the, they collided for it. This one's on Baker. So each team, that's his first. Each team's now got three. 117 to go in the first. Five-point lead for Byrne Burton. And Windsor's Aldrich. That's swatted and loose, kicked around off the hands of Lenz, but he got it back. He'll take the shot and get it for two. Tim Lenz drops it in. You could say that Lenz, an era of respectability. Fast break ahead of the pack is Anton. Windsor catches up with a spin move, doesn't drop for him. He tipped it back outside, though, for the shot up by Towsley. Nope. And, and uh, Cowan in a crowd. Nope. The big guys couldn't get it done for Byrne Burton on that trip. Outside, Buckner racing left side. Underneath, they'll put it up and put it in. Give that basket to Blake Wright. So four points off the bench for Windsor, and they close to within one at 11 to 10 with 28 seconds to go in quarter number one. The speed of Windsor against the size of Byrne Burton, it would appear thus far in the ball game. Speed and tenacity, I gotta say, of the, of, uh, the Yellow Jackets. Inside is Cowan, makes the move and hits it. They go to the big fella, all six foot six of him, and Cowan's conver Cowan converts it. 13 to 10, Byrne Burton with time running out in the quarter. And it will wind up after one quarter with Byrne Burton 13 and Windsor 10. Reb Brassar, a 5'6 senior, will see his first action for Windsor as they will come back out on the court following the timeout. I'm such an artist, I didn't put down who called that timeout. There wasn't a timeout, it's between quarters. What am I thinking? Yeah, I'm losing my mind. I'm punchy after all the games this week. Sorry about that, folks. That's right, three games coming Saturday, too. Byrne Burton would like to get back there and repeat the championship. They are the defending champs in Division Two. And Windsor would like nothing more than to stop him. Aldrich on the baseline. For Brassauer, back to Aldrich. They'll go way outside, three ball for Blake Wright. Backside rebound pulled down by Tulander. Here's Towsley. Talk about Windsor speed, but Byrne Burton doesn't waste any time getting the ball down either. Tulander, nice move, knocked loose underneath by Blake Wright. Well, Blake Wright's come off the bench, and I can recall you saying his name a whole bunch. He has done a lot for Windsor in the short time he's been out there. Here's Tulander. We'll find Anton wanted to go back to Tulander. Blake Wright tipped it up. Buckner on the right. Starts in baseline, Buckner taking it in, too hard. Inside Danu in a crowd, partially deflected, and finally Cowan picked it off. Windsor fans wanted a whistle, didn't get it. Here's Cowan. They'll go down low and kick it back out around. Cowan will take the shot. Hangs it on the rim for a second, nope. And on the rebound, looks like Cowan over the back of Danu. So Cowan commits his first and the team's fourth personal foul. We've played a minute and 14 seconds into the second quarter. It's 13 to 10, Byrne Burton. And Windsor's Sean Buckner. You look on the court, the teams don't look evenly matched, what with the size of Byrne Burton, but the heart and the uh, speed and the toughness of Windsor makes up for an awful lot of height. Although it's awful hard to make up for somebody 6'6 who's playing effectively. A nice 
play by Tulander to stop right at the baseline. Swinging right through with a charge. Oh my, is John Towsley. Oh. It's time for a cliche. You do that on the street, you get probation. Here the guy, here the other team gets the ball. Man, that was a big league charge. That was Mack truck time. Fifth team foul on Byrne Burton, first on Towsley. He could have committed multiple fouls in one hit. Boy, did he lay him out. He missed the shot, but get it back. And the scramble for the loose ball goes out of bounds to Byrne Burton. So Windsor will show full court pressure. Shane Tanzi comes back in. Reb Brassor will take a seat. Both are seniors. 13-10, Byrne Burton. 6.04 to go in the half. In for Anton. He'll loop it for Towsley down in the corner. Inside for Cowan, traveling with it. The Yellow Jackets will take the turnover. James Aldrich in for Windsor. Aldrich will kick it back outside. That pawn by Bright, nope. And the rebound down for Burn Burton and Towsley. Here's Dylan Baker. Way outside for Anton. Now, Burn Burton has a guy six foot four or better way out on the point. They go down low to Cowan. Comes back to Tulander, broken up, taken away by the Yellow Jackets. They'll get it down quickly, don't waste any time to Tenzi. Bounce pass inside, Anton knocked it loose and picked up by the Bulldogs. 5.05 to go in the half, three point lead for Byrne Burton and Baker lets it fly. Nope, pulled down by Danu. He didn't have to jump for that one, fast break pass, swatted out of bounds alertly by Dylan Baker. So Wright will sit down, and coming in the lineup is Joey Hamill. 4.54 left to go in the first half. 13 to 10, Burn Burton. Started out like it was going to be a very up and down, high scoring affair. The scoring has kind of slowed way down. The speed hasn't slowed much. Well, for three, outside is Hamill. And that one rattles but doesn't drop. And Anton. Uh, Cowan pulled down the rebound. Now Cowan set a pick and he goes out at the high post up near the foul line, trying to clear it out. There's Cowan. Tulander in the corner. He'll kick it back outside for Anton. He'll fake and he'll fire and get it. Anton drops it in. 15 to 10, we played almost half of the quarter and that's the first two points scored in the second quarter by anybody. Top of the key, Aldrich, nope. Tipped way outside, recovered by the Yellow Jackets. Buckner chased it down. Sean Buckner, he's gonna go right inside. Tried to find Danu and uh, couldn't do it. It's out of bounds and it will be Windsor Ball. No, nope, they're gonna call a foul, excuse me. So that foul goes against uh, Burn Burton. It'll be, let's see how they're gonna sugar this thing off. It's gonna be Windsor Ball. That one goes against Buckner, his second. No, not Buckner, we're gonna do Baker, his second. I'm Baker, my error. Two number 11s, I apologize. It's game number whatever this week. And God knows how many in two weeks, and I'm a little punchy. i got to concentrate a little better. Bottom line, Windsor ball. Lens off the inbounds pass. Now there is a mismatch. You've got, uh, and I'm not too bad at mismatch. Two landers, a little taller. Yeah, 6'1 and about 5'8. Inside Tansy for Danu. Tried to put it up, couldn't do it. Got it back and laid it in. Jeff. 
Danu, and it's 15 to 12. Byrne Burton's lead is down to three. And a Bulldog flat on his back was Baker. Guess he's gonna be okay. It's getting rough under the baskets at both ends of the court. Three-point Bulldog lead, 329 left to go in the half. Inside to Anton. And here's Baker in the backcourt being chased by Lenz. Down low for Cowan, right across underneath for Towsley. His shot no, and a whistle on the rebound. And again, over the back, uh, Burn Burton. Looks like Towsley picked it up. If it is Towsley, it would be his second. And it's going to be, they're going to shoot the one and one. It's going to be the 17 foul. That is on Towsley. And my short acquaintance with uh, young John Towsley, I'm assuming that that young 5'9 senior doesn't do anything by half. So Joey Hamill will go to the line and shoot one and one. Doesn't get it. And the rebound Anton taken away by the Yellow Jackets. Outside for Buckner's shot, short. Scramble on the re <coughs> rebound, Tulander in a crowd. He'll slow it up a little bit. 15 to 12, Burn Burton. Here's Sire outside, a little touch pass for Anton inside. He's got two. Cowan, excuse me. Jeez. Cowan and Anton are driving me crazy, the identification on those guys. They should know it. They don't look that much alike. Yeah, it's number 31 and 32, but I proffer no excuses. Way outside is Danu. Nope. And that rebound is Mike Tulander. Tulander with the dribble almost taken away. He'll get it to Baker. Out on top, Tulander takes the shot. Got it. Tulander hit the shot, and Burn Burton going to take a timeout. 2.13 to go in the half, 19 to 12, the Bulldogs. That was, a, I believe when we broke, I said that was an, a Burr Burton timeout. It's a Windsor timeout. 19 to 12. Burren Burton has the lead. 2-12 left to go here in the first half. Here's Hamill outside for Windsor. Tansy works left. They'll kick it out for the three ball by Lenz. Nope. And Anton the rebound for the Bulldogs. Sire goes down low underneath for Cowens and gets it back. Sire takes the shot and hits it. Eight for Andrew Sire and a 21-12 lead with a 134 to go in the half. Danu inside for Windsor gets the roll. Jeff Danu's got four. 21-14, that arching inbounds pass comes to Anton. A little behind the back trickiness by Towsley. Here's Tulander inside for Cowan. Tulander goes around it and he walked through the ball. So still a seven point lead for Burn Burton with 1.12 left to go here in the, fir in the first half. Hamill on the left for the Yellow Jackets. Baseline lens, the backhander doesn't fall. And the Bulldogs pull it out, one and done for Windsor. 53 seconds left in the first half. Tulander outside for Anton, off the glass and good. Anton's got six. 38 seconds to go in the first half. 23-14, Burr and Burton. Lens on the point, goes down low underneath for Danu. Muscles in, missed the shot. And Towsley the rebound for the Bulldogs. 17 seconds left in the half. Inside for Anton and back. Whistle. And that foul against Windsor. We'll see when they post it up on the board. 
That'll be the fourth team foul on Windsor, but personal-wise, that's the first on Shane Tanzi. And to the line is Doug Anton. Talk about a mismatch. Tanzi at 5'9", and Anton listed at 6'4". Looks taller than that to me. But. So Anton will go to the free throw line, and he'll shoot the pair. Ten seconds left in the first half. He'll get one more. Still 23-14, Burn Burton. Aldrich back into the lineup. So Anton, one more time. Missed them both. Wins her the rebound with eight seconds to go in the first half. And putting up the sh running shot is Aldrich. Nope. Bulldogs pull it down in the first half, comes to a close, and after one half, as they go to the locker room in this boys' division two semifinal, it is Burn Burton 23 and Windsor 14. Well, first half, 23-14 in favor of Burn Burton. The Bulldogs get it back to start. They'll go right back for Anton, and he'll pour it through. Give him eight. Windsor inside for Danu, and he's got two. My first connection with Burn Burton came in the year 1958. I grew up in Northfield, and uh, Burr Burton knocked off Northfield in the state title game that year, and uh, I believe it was Class B at that time. There's Anton with two. It was a class, uh, well, it was Class I. I guess it was one of the first years they had Class I. And it was a 64-56 win for Burn Burton in that championship game played at Middlebury College. Inside Danu. And then I remember Burn Burton. That's traveling on the Bulldogs. I remember Burn Burton in the late 70s when they started having some excellent teams and brought them up here, brought their fans by the busload. And, um, Remember St. Michael's College when they defeated U32 in a state championship game on a last minute shot by Nathan Choice. A nice move inside for James Aldrich. So Windsor now, I was trying to put a connection on Windsor. My first meeting with Windsor was when I started uh, WSKI Radio back in the mid 70s and uh, they beat Montpelier in a playoff game over at Oxbow. I think that was my first. Well, it wasn't really my first connection with him. My first was a state title game up at uh, the Patrick Gym in the late 60s, I think it was. I'll look it up. Tipped up and in by Daniel. 27-22. Wins are on a little bit of a roll. Burn Burton's going to take a 30-second timeout. 27-22 Bulldogs. Well, Windsor hanging tough against the much bigger Burn Burton ball club. Closes the gap to five. In the second quarter, Burn Burton outscored Windsor 10 to four. A steal by Windsor. Here's Tansy inside, yes! And he'll get the shot. So Tansy closes it to 27-24. His first basket of the night. And he'll get a free throw. Missed that one. Pulled down underneath by Zach Cowan. Here's Baker. 6.08 to go in the third. 27-24. Windsor has pulled it within three. A touch pass comes back from an Anton. He'll get it back. Go to Cowan inside. The big guy rolls it in. That's tough to defend against when you got two big guys that close together and that uh, that agile. 29-24. Little give, give and go, and Windsor retains possession. They'll kick it back outside for Buckner, who starts in the jump pass underneath for the tip shot. It doesn't go for Tansy. And Bulldogs pull it down and Anton. High post for Cowens. He bumps into Danielle. They'll kick it back outside for Tulander. He'll take it into the paint, but decide to come back out. They'll, Sire puts it up and 
Nope, he got it back though. Rebound stuffed down his throat, a hell ball, and it'll go to Windsor. Sire tried to put it up in a crowd and there were three green shirts around him. 5-11 to go in the third, 29-24, Burn Burton. Hamill, looking for some help. We'll find Tansy outside. 4.57 to go, third quarter. After one quarter, it was 13 to 10, Burn Burton. Down low underneath, nice scoop shot for Tansy, won't fall, and the rebound out of there by Cowan. Tulander, left side. Back for Baker, takes the three. Got it. Dylan Baker's first points of the night. It's a three ball from that left side, and it's 32-24, the Bulldogs. Windsor trying to counter with it with a three by Hamill, but one and done. There's Anton the rebound, and they'll hustle at the forecourt. Anton on the point, finds Tulander that left side. Baker for three again, this one's off the mark, missed everything. Windsor ball, 4.09 left to go in the third. 409, if you're of a certain age, that 409 reminds you of the song about the Chevy 409. But the mind wanders here at the auditorium late in the evening. Inside for Buckner, got it. Sean Buckner's in the scorebook. That's his first points of the night, 32-26, the Bulldogs. And Burn Burton gets it up. Heavy pressure by Windsor, but the Bulldogs maintained their cool, kept it up. Anton down low, wants to spin move, gets it. Well, Cowan's extremely quick to go with that six foot six inches in height and the layup thrown up but missed by Hamill. A whistle and a foul on the Bulldogs. I think it's on Anton. It is, it's his first. It'll be the second team foul against Burn Burton. 3.24 to go in the third. And Joey Hamill to the line. He's one for three from the foul line tonight. Make him two of four. His club was one for three uh, in the first half. They are now two of five from the foul line. Working on six with 5'11 senior Joey Hamill. Got it. Got them both. 34-27. Bulldogs. Hamill comes out, and Blake Wright comes in. Blake Wright, a 6-1 senior. When Blake came in the ball game in the first half, he made some things happen for Windsor. That inbounds comes for Anton. Now Baker. Seven point, excuse me, six point edge. Left hand shot up too hard by Anton. And they scramble for the loose ball. That fouls against Windsor's Sean Buckner. Be his first, team's first. 3-11 to go in a third. 34-28. The Bulldogs of Burr and Burton in the driver's seat. In for Anton. He's going to take the long two. And nothing but net. That was a pretty shot. They gave him the opening. He took it. He popped it right through. Underneath for Blake Wright, and Blake Wright's got two. 36 to 30, the Bulldog lead is at six. They're coming in to either, to either Anton or Cowan, that time Cowan, and that arching pass kind of lets him, let the big guy go up and get it to take it in. Anton in a crowd, he's inside for Tulander. I thought Anton could have had a sandwich and a cold drink in that paint he was in there so long. Down low, Danu in traffic. Doesn't get the shot to fall, but does draw two, two free throws for his effort. And Cowan picks up his second personal foul. That'll be the third team foul in the half against Byrne Burton. 2.22 left to go in the third. And that one in and out for Danu. 
The rim giveth and the rim taketh away at this end of the Barry Auditorium. Missed them both. That one wasn't the rim. That was just your basic short foul shot. That was your 14 foot 11 inch attempt. Tipped loose, finally picked up Anton. They'll kick it back out to Tulander and they'll set it up again. Anton way outside. Cowens is down low, Anton at the free throw line, and Anton goes underneath. Nice move, spinning through is Sire, and Andrew Sire now has 10 points. Sire has scored in every quarter, 40 to 30. The 10 point advantage for the Bulldogs of Burn Burton with 144 to go here in the third. Windsor down by 10, trying to get three back in a hurry. It doesn't fall there off the hands of Aldrich. He'll get it back though, and Daniel got it, and he'll go to the line. Daniel. So, Tulander commits his second personal foul. And Daniel will go to the mark. Couple of freebies for the 6'2 junior. He got the roll on the first one. Or excuse me. He got the bucket in one. Punchiness kicking in at, after nine o'clock at night here at the auditorium. I apologize for that. Inside, Cowan brings it up. 42. 33. Nine point lead for the Bulldogs. Daniel starts in in traffic, way up off the glass. And Anton up to clear it for the Bulldogs. Anton twisting and turning. Winner of this one takes on Mount Abe. From the baseline, Tulander didn't get the roll. Daniel did get the rebound for Windsor, and here come the Yellow Jackets. Jackets down by nine, top of the key. Daniel, nope. And a whistle on a rebound. And that one is on Windsor. And that one goes on Dean Tancredi. Bulldogs getting some token pressure in the backcourt as Baker will bring it up with a dribble. Gets it off into the corner. And they throw it away. So the Bulldogs get sloppy with it. With 14 and a half seconds left to go in the third quarter. And Burn Burton up 42 to 33. Tancredi on the near side for Windsor. Cutting down through the middle, putting it up as Blake Wright. It's he rejected. And a whistle underneath, and another foul will go against Windsor. This one will go against Tim Lenz. It's his first third team foul, and time running out in the fourth in the third quarter, and that'll do it. With three quarters of the way through in this boys' Division II semifinal, and after three, it's Burn Burton 42 and Windsor 33. Eight minutes left to go in this Division II semifinal. Windsor seeing if they can worry some points out of the Burn Burton Bulldogs. Windsor's Jeff Daniel added nine on his own, and. Uh, 19 in the quarter for Windsor in the third quarter. And each club got 19. They played dead flat even. The second quarter was uh, one where Burn Burton pulled away a little bit. They outscored Bur uh, Windsor 10 to four. Bulldogs start off the quarter with possession. They go to Anton and back. And he and Tulander play a little catch. Cowan way up inside, intended for Anton with an alley-oop, but swatted out of bounds by Blake Wright. 
Well, win, lose, or draw, Windsor will sleep on the bus tonight going back. They've left nothing on the bus. They've given it all out here on the floor. So has Burn Burton. Down low for Anton, or for Cowan, rather. Cowan shot no and a foul on the rebound. And that's going to be called against Andrew Sire of Burn Burton. Sire has two personal fouls. That's the fourth team foul on Burn Burton. And Tansy comes in. And also Aldrich comes in for Windsor. Jo Joey Hamill checks in. So Windsor down by 42 to 33. Danu inside. They'll pop long and roll it through for a three ball. That one off the hands for James Aldrich. Five second half points. And Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable defense. That's worth a highlight reel. Wow. Just plain wow. Inside it comes to Daniel. Spinning in the lane is Aldrich. He'll get fouled as he goes to the hoop. Not a shooting violation, but the fifth team foul, sixth team foul, excuse me. They just posted number six up on the board. And that is the second on Anton. So Windsor to put it in. They're down by eight. And another foul goes against Bird Burton. That'll put the one and one in effect for at the Windsor end. And every time that Windsor gets fouled, now they go to the line. That's the third on Sire. So Tansy will go to the line. So far, Windsor hasn't burned up the nets from the foul line. They're four of 10 thus far unofficially in the ball game. Tansy will get a pair. Doesn't get the rattle on this one on the front end of the one and one. The Bulldogs will hustle the forecourt and two lander. 6-13 left to go in the ball game. 44-36, Burn Burton. Toolander draws a swarm of Yellow Jackets. They knock it out, it'll still be Bulldog ball. I've been waiting to use that swarm line all night. Inbounds pass, comes off to Cowan, touch pass over in the corner for the shot by Baker, nope. Rebound to the Jackets. Here's Hamill. Thought about the three, wanted to go for Danu and the pass, nobody there. Anton got a hand on it, tipped it over to a teammate, and the Bulldogs will bring it up. With 5.42 left to go in the ballgame. Inside Cowan, spin move over Daniel. Cowan very quietly got 14 points. Threading the needle is Aldrich. Nope, and Cowan the rebound. Take one and head the other way for Windsor. It's 5.20 left to go in the ballgame. Sire way out on the right. Inside Anton, back out Toolander. Down low for Cowan, Anton. He'll take the jump shot and get it. Doug Anton, he's got 14. So Cowan and Anton have combined for 28 of the 48 points and timeout Windsor with 4.59 to go ball game. 48-36 the Bulldogs. One tick of the clock, under five minutes left to go in this boys' semifinal in Division Two. And Burn Burton has pulled out to a 12-point advantage. It didn't seem too long ago that Windsor had closed to three. Defense, defense, defense. Windsor's got to be start playing beat the clock as well as beat the Bulldogs here pretty soon. Danu inside, it goes around Anton. Nope, or took, uh, went around, yeah, he went around Anton. And the Bulldogs come out with it. Way in the corner for Sire. Here's Cowan with the jumper. Nope. Toolander the rebound. Back out to Cowan. He'll kick it away. But nope, he won't. Taken away by Windsor. Picked off underneath by Aldrich. He'll storm down and he will get traveling called against him. I was going to say pounded into the, into the mats, but the official on top of the play called it a walk. Inbounds for Anton, and it's knocked out by Windsor. It'll still be Bulldog ball. 
Inside for Anton on the alley-oop, taken away from behind and out of bounds off Windsor. It'll be Bulldog ball, 4-11 left to go ball game. Again, the alley-oop stolen away by Hamill and a whistle foul on Burn Burton. Before the travel could be called, the travel was a result of the contact. And Joey Hamill will go to the free throw line. So Cowan on the near side, Anton on the far side, man the parallels down low for Burn Burton. And Joey Hamill will shoot a pair. He got the roll on the first one. He's taken six free throws and he's made four of them. See how he does on number seven, got it. He's got uh, eight points so far on the night. Inbounds, they'll come to Anton. And now Tulander. And Tulander has it stripped loose. Saved by Hamill. All the way down underneath come the Jackets. Up off the glass, shot no, rebound in a crowd. Danu is pounded. Oh, my. And he was clobbered by Anton. Anton thought he got the ball. Danu will go to the line for two. And that's the fourth foul on Doug Anton. 3.54 to go in the ball game. A 10-point lead for Burn Burton. And Jeff Daniel to the free throw line. He is two for five from the foul line tonight with that shot. He had nine um, third quarter points. That last free throw and this one will give him 15 so far tonight. Again, the arching alley-oop type pass. This time comes to Cowan. Looked like Windsor had that sort of figured out. Tulander saved it nicely back to Baker. And Cowan is fouled way outside. That'll be the fourth team foul on Windsor. It'll go against Sean Buckner. It'll be his second. 3.43 to go in the ball game. An eight point lead for Byrne Burton. And we're gonna see the Yellow Jackets swarming all over defensively, I'm sure. It's not insurmountable, but They've got to play beat the clock as well as beat the Bulldogs here in the next 3.38. Cowan inside, they'll come back out for Tulander. Down, and they'll kick it right back in and out. Cowan put it to the floor, goes to the hole and gets it. Zach Cowan has 10 second half points, 16 on the night, 50 to 40. In favor of Byrne Burton, a three attempt, rattles doesn't go for Danu. They'll hustle it up quickly for Sire. Sire really being watched by Danu and five seconds have elapsed, he couldn't get rid of it. Good defense by Windsor as Jeff Danu pressured the ball, not allowing him to move it in five seconds and it will be Windsor ball. Down by 10 with 3.03 to go in the ball game. They could hit a couple of threes, they could make this interesting. They can't waste a lot of time doing it. Aldrich starts in off a foot inside and it will still be Windsor ball. They'll take it out down on the baseline. So Windsor to inbound. They'll find Daniel. And he wanted the shot, didn't take it. Three ball attempt, Buckner is good. John Buckner has five. Club is within seven at 50 to 43. And hustling up his sire. Really bottled up and a foul is going to be called on either Danu or Tanzi. They collapsed on sire. It'll be the fifth team foul on Windsor. 2.31 to go in the ball game. That one's going to get called on Tanzi, his second. Danu only has one, two. Down low underneath for Anton. He lays it in. Using the height to advantage. 16 on the night for Anton. This one goes against the Bulldogs. And this is on Anton, that's five. Doug Anton has fouled out of the ball game. 
So Anton will wind up the night. He had six first half points and 10 second half points, a total of 16. And we will see John Towsley check in. Now with Towsley, they lose about six or seven inches in height, but they don't lose any intensity. He just plays with abandon. Then you will go to the free throw line, hit the free throw. 52-44, an eight-point spread for Byrne Burton with 221 left to go in the ball game. Then you got them both under pressure. And Byrne Burton throws it away. If Windsor can catch up with it, they'll take it. They do. Kenzie, 52-45, Byrne Burton, and stolen right back by Baker. Heads-up play by Dylan Baker. He traveled with it. Lost it out of bounds. He was slipping and sliding, and turned it over, and Byrne Burton wants the timeout to talk it over. 2.07 to go ball game, 52-45, the Bulldogs. Well, so far, it's been the height of the Byrne Burton Bulldogs for the most part against the grit and tenacity of the Windsor Yellow Jackets. And the Bulldogs on top, 52-45, with 2.06 to go in the ball game. And that is off the Windsor leg. That's off Buckner. Bulldogs will take the turnover. You know that they are going to face the heavy-duty defensive pressure. Inbounds pass comes for Cowan. Cowan, they'll finally get it up. And it's knocked loose, but, and it is stolen by Windsor. Taken right back ahead of the pack comes Danu in traffic, lays it in. What a second half Jeff Danu's had. He's got 15 or 16 second half points, and on the inbounds pass, Windsor commits their 16 foul. So, 140 to go in the ball game, a 52-47 ball game, five point spread, with 140 left to go in the contest. Baker to put it in. That arching pass comes up, tipped up, tipped up, stolen away. Danu in a crowd. Got hammered. Looks like Cowan got him. And Daniel will go back to the free throw line with 1.37 to go. That's the third on Cowan. And Daniel to the free throw line. He had 13 points through the third quarter. He's had 15, 17, 19, 20, now 21. Working on 22 for Jeff Daniel. 52-48, and 52-49, Windsor's close to within three. They had trailed by as many as 12. Auditorium crowd has come alive. Nice behind the back move by Towsley, and he almost lost it. Windsor had it and stepped on the sideline in the person of Sean Buckner. 131 left to go in the ball game. 52-49, Burn Burton. They go down low and kick it back outside for Towsley. Bulldogs have that lead. Sire thought about the shot, decides to go underneath now, ultimately for the big guy. They went to Cow and he didn't make it, and here comes Windsor, a chance to close it up. They go down inside for Tansy. They'll come back around, three ball attempt by Buckner, doesn't drop, and the rebound comes on down to the Bulldogs and Baker. Baker in the backcourt. Having some troubles, it's punched loose, saved by Windsor, 52-49. And Windsor, three ball for Buckner, got it, and we're tied at 52. Buckner drains a three, and we got a timeout with 50.3 seconds left, and Byrne Burton leading at, uh, no, excuse me, we're tied at 52, mercy. Wow. Buckner came down and drained the three, with 50.3 left. Mother of Pearl. Windsor has come back. What a second half for Jeff Daniel. He had four first half points. He presently sits unofficially at 22. So if you do the math, that means he's at 18 second half points. Yep, he's at nine in each quarter, Jeff Daniel, but the big three-pointer by Sean Buckner 
levels it off with 50.3 seconds left to go in the ball game. Now, Byrne Burton has committed 10 team fouls, so that means if Windsor goes to the line, that they will get two shots. Byrne Burton will have one and one if they run the next foul if Windsor commits one. So on the inbounds play, the Bulldogs to put it in, 50.3 remain. Inbounds they will come. Tulander had it, now takes it up. Byrne Burton in possession, 41 seconds to go in the ball game, tied at 52. Windsor defense has been unbelievable here in this one. Tulander open at the free throw line, didn't get it. Rebound, Daniel. And a foul on Byrne Burton. Over the back was Andrew Sire. And to the line will go Jeff Danu for two for the Yellow Jackets. Danu is a junior, six foot two, got 22 so far. And he'll get a pair here. First one is good. Windsor leads, I, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say for the first time in the game, except maybe two nothing, I don't remember. No, it was Byrne Burton with the first bucket. So it's the first time that, that uh, Windsor's led and Danu can them both. Timeout, call Byrne Burton, 28.8 left to go in the ball game. 54, 52 Windsor. Well, Windsor's tenacity has given them the lead. Smaller ball club, and then when Doug Anton fouled out, it really opened up a little bit of space for Windsor. But they had battled back. They had trailed by as many as 12 at one stretch. And that in the second half. So, Byrne Burton will put it in play. 28.8 left to go here, and the inbounds pass comes to Tulander. Here's Baker. If Windsor fouls, it gives Byrne Burton the one and one. Outside Baker, Tulander takes the long two and ties the ball game with 13 seconds left to go in the ball game. Windsor will bring it up and call a timeout. We're even at 54 with 12.8 left to go in regulation time and it's knotted at 54, Windsor and Byrne Burton. 13.8 seconds left to go. We're even at 54 as Tulander's field goal tied it up. Mike Tulander, the 6'1 senior, evened it up at 54. Well, we said earlier these clubs had met twice and split, so they know all about each other. 13.8 left to go in the ball game. Aldrich to put it in for the Yellow Jackets. We're gonna see some backcourt pressure applied a little bit, maybe just token, I guess just token pressure, 11 seconds as Windsor obviously going to play for the one shot. They go down low to Daniel, and he can't find it with five seconds left to go. So Byrne Burton has it in with five seconds left to go in the ball game. And a timeout called by the Bulldogs with five seconds left. They'll get it one more time and try to win this thing in regulation. 54-54, Windsor and Byrne Burton. Well, five seconds left to go. Now, in this particular ball game, five seconds doesn't seem like a lot of time the way Windsor's been playing defense. But we've only seen Burn Burton put the ball in underneath the op opposition basket real close with all five guys down in their backcourt. We'll see if they break on that and try to get somebody down low, especially big Zach Cowan. But let's wait and see. They've used the alley-oop every time to put the ball in play. Now they're going to bring it in quickly. With time running out, and will they get it down and get it up and get it down? They put it up, and it goes, but it will not count. Sire's shot will not count. The official on the far side was just saying no about the time he let it go. I couldn't hear the buzzer, but I saw the official, and he said no, and we're headed to the OT. After regulation, it's Windsor 54 and Burn Burton 44, or 54. Well, it's the first overtime game we've covered in the tournament this year. It's Windsor and Byron Burton. Zach Cowan will hop it up against uh, Jeff Daniel. Daniel will give up four inches in height. 
but absolutely nothing in heart. That kid has just played his heart out. He's got 22 unofficially through regulation time. And Windsor has battled back. Win, lose, or draw, these Windsor kids have got to be proud of themselves for the effort they put forth, especially late in this ball game. Bulldogs get the tip in the, to start the four-minute overtime. They'll work it down inside to Cowan, pick it back out. Here's Tulander, the guy who tied it up, and he doesn't get the roll this time. This time the rebound is off the hands of Windsor and off uh, Joey Hamill. So it's still Bulldog ball. They've had it for 20 seconds of this overtime. They'll get it back. You have one eye on the clock and the other eye on your opposition here in this situation. Don't think we'll see a lot of uh, three balls until desperation time. I think we're gonna see each club try to work it and get the good shot, especially if Bull the Bulldogs get, get an offensive weapon and Cowan down low. Now notice he, he has shifted down lower on the parallel than he had been before with Anton out of there. Here's Tulander on top. Way across court. Sire, nice save. They almost threw it away. Sire into the paint, takes the fade away. No, not there. Tipped up, control Windsor. Bulldogs had it for almost a minute. They go ahead and it's knocked loose. Picked up Windsor. Hamill lost it. They scramble, loose ball. They collide. Nobody's got it. Nobody's got it. Finally, the Bulldogs will get it. Burn Burton has had it for most of the overtime thus far. Here's Tulander up top. Sire, nobody on him way out there. 2.37 to go in the overtime. Tulander starts in. They go to Sire inside for Anton. Back to Sire. He'll take the shot and drop it through for two. Andrew Sire in the overtime. 56-54. The Bulldogs, 218 left to go in the ball game. And here's Aldrich started in. Swatted loose, knocked out of bounds. Two minutes and 10 seconds left to go in the overtime. A two point lead for Burn Burton. And Windsor to put it in. Aldrich for the inbounds pass. He'll get it off and return, drive inside, lay it up and tie the ball game. So Aldrich with two in the overtime, or even at 56 with two minutes to go. Bulldogs, Tulander down the lane, missed the shot. Anton the putback up in excuse me, Cowan, Cowan, that Cowan. Anton is on the bench having fouled out in the fourth quarter. Hamill, 58, 56, Burn Burton, 133 to go in the ballgame. Three-point attempt by Hamill, rattles no, the rebound, Burn Burton. And being grabbed was Sire, the man who got him was Shane Tenzi, that's the fourth on Tenzi. And we will walk down to the Burn Burton end and we'll shoot the one and one. 58, 56. I gotta check my book. I think we're uh, let's see, two, let's see, 54 all after regulation. And on the line will be Andrew Sire. His first one is good. He's got three points in the overtime. Three of his club's five. He'll get one more. 59, 56. Burn Burton. 127 left in the ball game. He got them both. 60 to 56, 126 left to go in the contest. Here's Buckner. Windsor down by four. Inside Danu, he's got to go around the cow, around Cowan, got it. And he'll go to the line. So Jeff Daniel, that's the fourth on Cowan. First two in the overtime for Daniel. He'll possible three-point play, 60-58. Make it 
One point lead belongs to the Bulldogs with 1.13 left to go in the ball game. Here's Baker for Burr and Burton. 109 left, Baker scoots up into forecourt. Baker just eating up clock right now. His club up by one, two lander, pressured outside. Goes to Cowan, they'll touch it back outside for Sire to Cowan, back to Sire, nobody on him, didn't take it. Here's a cross for Towsley. Sire, the 12 footer, too long, it is out of bounds to Windsor. 46.9 left to go in the ball game. Fasten your seatbelt, here we go. One point lead for Byrne Burton. And they'll come on in for Joey Hamill. He'll give it back. For Aldrich, almost threw it away, but saved. Come off on the near side, 36 seconds to go. They'll put the shot up and not there. Rebound underneath his Tensley, lost it. And they collide. This one is gonna go on Windsor, I believe. It's gonna go on Hamill. As Harry Ledoux was looking for the charging violation. But and it'll be one and one. It'll be the ninth team foul, and going to the line will be Sire again. Issue one and one. He has four points in the overtime. Four of his club six. That's the third on Hamill. 30.6 seconds left, a one point lead for Burr and Burton. Even if he makes them both, it could be a one pos possession ball game to tie it up for Windsor. On the line, Sire, no, rebound, Windsor. It's still a one-point ball game, 60 to 59, and the Jackets come up quickly. Hamill baseline, lets it fly and hits. Hamill drops it in, and Windsor's got the lead with 19 seconds to go. Down comes Sire, he's got a man to beat, and does so. Sire, very, very nice shot, excellent. 62-61 Bulldogs, eight seconds to go. Three for Danielle, got it! Danielle drops it in, 3.3, and timeout, Burn Burton. Jeff Danielle drained a three ball. What a game he's had. Man, oh man, Jeff Daniel came down and let it fly and nothing but net. Tell the guys in the replay truck to slow-mo that one down. 3.3 seconds left on the clock, and Windsor has a two-point lead. 64 to 62 with 3.3 left. And for Jeff Daniel, what a second half. He had four in the first half. Through regulation, he had 22. He has added seven points here. They've added a little bit of time. It's 4.9 left to go. 4.9. I wonder how they determined the amount, unless somebody looked at the clock when it went through. They called it immediately. So Windsor players exhorting their fans to make some noise. They're not out of the woods yet, but they can see light through the leaves. 64-62 Windsor. You have to think the Bulldogs will try to get it down to Zach Cowan inside and at least draw the foul, if not make the shot. You see Cowan going to set up way down under his own basket. He's got Daniel right there with him. And on the inbounds play. Burn Burton to throw it in. They're going to go for the pass down underneath the, for the big guy, Cowan. He drops it in, ties it. Time running out, time out, Windsor. Seven tenths of a second left. You saw that one coming. 64 apiece, seven tenths of a second left. Seven tenths of a second left. Remember, the clock will not start until somebody touches the ball. And Windsor doesn't have the luxury of that uh, long baseball pass to the, the really big guy down there. They can get it to somebody near midcourt and let them try to crank it, but there's not a lot of time left for much of anything. They'll throw it all the way down, football style. It is tipped loose, and we're going to double overtime. My, oh my. They are 10 points in a single overtime for each team, and after one OT, it is Burn Burton 64 and Windsor 64. Windsor will get it to start the second overtime. They're not gonna jump, oh, they are gonna jump it up, excuse me, they jump it up in each overtime, my error. I thought that once they did it once, that was it, but no, they're gonna jump it up. 
So Cowan will jump it up against uh, Jeff Daniel. So we're set to put the ball up and start overtime number two. Tip control by Byrne Burton. Here's Baker. He comes across for Sire. 3.48 left to go in overtime number two. Sire will take the long, nope, they're not going to take it. It's tipped loose and the Jackets pick it up. Quickly hustle it on down to Aldrich. Aldrich almost lost it. Retains though, three for Danu. Hangs it on the rim and got it. I'm running out of space in my scorebook for Danu. And a steal by Windsor, 67-64 the Jackets, 322 left to go. And a foul called against Burr and Burton, pushing was Baker. And that will put Joey Hamill on the line for a pair. He had two in the overtime. Aldrich had two in the overtime. Danu would had six in the overtime, and he's got three in the second overtime. Hamill missed the first one. Well, make some reservations for scrambled eggs and bacon. This one could go on all night. Hamill got one of two. 68-64, Windsor. 319 left to go in the ball game. Towsley. Here's Baker bringing it up. Buckner with him defensively. Tulander way outside for the Bulldogs. 3.03 to go in the second overtime. 68-64 Windsor. Sire inside for Cowan and Cowan drops it in. 68-66 the Windsor lead is two with 2.48 left to go in the ball game. Or excuse me in the second overtime. Getting punchy. Hamill outside, and knocked loose, stolen away by Sire. He's got to beat Hamill, lays down, lays it up too hard. Tip right back, Towsley, no. And the loose ball scramble rebound to the Bulldogs. Bulldogs go way cross court for Sire. Thought about the two, but no. 2.17 left in OT number two. 68-66, Windsor. Here's Tulander in the paint. Back outside for Sires. Jump shot, two-pointer no, and a rebound, Danu. Two-point lead, Windsor, with two minutes left to go in the second overtime. From the corner for three, bang, for Buckner. Sean Buckner drops it in. And Tulander races to forecourt. The loose ball picked up underneath by Cowan for Sire. Got it, and he'll go to the line. Andrew Sire, he's had big overtimes. He's got uh, six, eight points in the overtime for Burr and Burton, a chance to make it nine. It's 71-68, three-point lead for Windsor with 1.46 to go in overtime number two. And if they add any more points or if they add any more overtimes, I'm running out of scorebook. scorebook. I'm going to have to go home. Wow. Sire, no. Tipped loose and saved by Shane Tanzi. Kenzie has it pocket pick. Sire came back down and knocked it loose. 671-68, Windsor. 135 left to go here in the second overtime. They go down low for Cowan, threw it away. It's going to be Windsor ball. Cowan went one way, the pass went the other. And Harry Ledoux up off the Windsor bench. Saying calm down a little bit. 128 left to go in the second overtime. The scoreboard at the auditorium where it says period, it says six. Don't see that too often. Down low, save Townsley. Nice heads up play. Wow, Tansy flipped it back inbounds off Cowan and Windsor will retain possession with 117 left to go in the ball game. <laughs> I keep saying ball game. Second overtime, excuse me. Outside for Buckner. There's Hamill. Hamill's got Towsley right there with him. And a foul will go against the Bulldogs and Towsley. So everything's two shots for Windsor. 106 left to go 
in the second overtime. The auditorium has become alive. It's electric. This is what the high school basketball is all about. On the line, good by Joey Hamill. And the 5'11 senior will get one more. 72-68, a two-possession game right now with 106 left to go. And Cowan pulls down the bound for the Bulldogs. Burn Burton's Baker with under a minute to go. Baker tries the three, doesn't get it. It's short inside for Cowan. He's got two. Zach Cowan pounded down two. 72 to 70. 47 seconds left to go in the second overtime. Hamill outside for Aldrich. Hamill back down, tipped out of bounds by Cowan. And boy, what a game that uh, Zach Cowan has played for Burn Burton. Timeout Windsor, 39.1 left to go in the second overtime. 72 to 70, Windsor leads Burr Burton. They're on their feet at the Barry Auditorium. What happened? They're on their feet at the Barry Auditorium. Windsor with 37 and a half seconds left to go here in the second overtime and Aldrich saved it. Hamill is fouled, he'll go to the line. 28.7 seconds left to go in the second OT. And Hamill will go back to the line. He's two for four in this second overtime from the free throw line. Well, if you bought a ticket for this one, you got your money's worth. Yep. Yep. And Hamill got it. Three-point lead for Windsor. Look, Mac pointed out the sportsmanship as you had uh, James Aldrich of Windsor talking it over with Dylan Baker from Burr and Burton. Joey Hamill missed that one, tipped outside. Control goes to the Jackets. Here's Hamill. Goes down into the corner for Daniel. And Daniel and Cowens collide, and Cowens picks up the foul. Wait a minute. Yep, they picked up the foul, but a timeout call by Burn Burton with 19.4 seconds left to go. And it's a 73 to 70 ball game with Windsor leading Burn Burton. In my error, I thought there was a foul down a little bit out of the line of sight and the way they collided, but apparently the timeout was called just prior to the contact, so no foul, my error. So Burn Burton wanted to talk it over. 19.4 seconds left to go. And Windsor Windsor will get it in. Aldrich to put it in. Aldrich looking for somebody. He will go underneath for Danielle. Danu is fouled. Now that was a little bit prescient, but it was fouled. And Danu will go to the free throw line. 73-70, 17.3 seconds left to go in the ball game. And that one is five on Zach Cowan. Zach Cowan has fouled out of the ball game. What a ball game he played. Twenty-four points for Zach Cowan. So both of the twin towers for Burr and Burton are out on fouls. And Jeff Danu will go to the line. What a ball game he has turned in. He got it. He'll get one more. 74 to 70. It's a two possession ball game right now for Burr and Burton with 17.3 left to go in the second overtime. Daniel, boom. Three, six, eight, nine, 11 points in overtime. The two overtimes for Daniel. And we got a charging violation called on the Bulldogs. Baker tried to bull his way through. Couldn't do it, turned it over with 15.4 left to go in the second overtime and that's the fifth on Baker. So three starters from Burn Burton have fouled out of the ballgame. 
Baker will end the night with five points. And we will see a new face. Kevin Cassidy comes in for Burr and Burton. But the horse may have left the barn for the Bulldogs. Aldrich to put it into Hamill. Here's Aldrich. He's going to go to the hole, put it up, doesn't get it. Bulldog rebound with nine seconds left to go. And Windsor will just let him take it down, lay it up, and lay it in. That by Sire. Sire gets the bucket. The Bulldogs want a timeout with 3.2 left and a 75-72 Windsor lead here in the second overtime. Well, time is running out for the Bulldogs, and both of their twin towers are on the bench. And as Max said just prior to coming back, you almost got a foul before the clock starts. 4.2 left, Windsor to put it in. And they will foul immediately, foul Daniel. And he will go to the line with 3.4, so about a second ticked off on the clock, maybe a little less, to Lander. And it will be, uh, let's see. Yep, eight tenths of a second. So Daniel will go to the free throw line. That's the third on Tulander, but he's not worried about that right now. And Daniel can put this out of reach. If Daniel hits one of two, it's over. Unless somebody fouls and does something really crazy towards the end. Daniel, one more free throw. If he doesn't hit it and the Bulldogs get it back, they got one last gasp. This one is up and goes, and this one's it for Windsor. 76-72, time running out. Tulander cranks for the long two, didn't get it. And Windsor goes to the state finals, ending a three-year run and a defending, or no, check that, a, a, uh, ending a, a repeat possibility for Byrne Burton. Wow, I'm punchy after two overtimes. I can imagine how tired the players are. It's been unbelievable watching this one. But the final is Windsor 76 and Burren Burton 72 in double overtime. Man, oh man. Let's look at individual scoring for Burren Burton. Doug Anton fouled out of the ball game with 16 points. Zach Cowan would finish up with 24. Mike Tulander would add seven points for his night's work. And Andrew Sire had a big night. He had eight in the first half. Eight through regulation time, 16 through regulation time, added four more, a total of 20 points for Andrew Sire. Dylan Baker would add five, and Byrne Burton would wind up with a total of uh, 72 points on the night. For the Windsor Yellow Jackets, they were down by 12 in the second half. They came back, and it ended uh, tied after regulation. They went to uh, the first overtime. It was tied there, and... In the second overtime, Windsor wins it by a score of 76 to 72. Individual scoring for Windsor. Shane Tanzi had a bucket for two. Sean Buckner, some big threes in that second half and in the overtimes as Buckner would wind up the night with 11 points. Nine of those coming on the three ball. James Aldrich came off the bench, did a heck of a job. He would wind up the night with nine points. Uh, Rab, Rob, Reb Brassor saw action, didn't score. Uh, Dean Tancredi saw action, didn't score. Joey Hamill, he had a good night as well. He had four in the first half. He had eight through regulation. And in the overtimes, he would add five more for 13 on the night. Big free throws, especially in that second overtime for Joey Hamill. Tim Lenz would wind up with two for the Yellow Jackets. Blake Wright made some good things happen for the Jackets. Wound up the night with four. Jeff Daniel, it's going to take me a minute to calculate his. He had 22 through regulation time. And in the overtime, unofficially, 12 points in overtime, which would give him 34 on the night unofficially. Wow, what a night for Jeff Daniel. Windsor wins a thriller in two overtimes here at the Berry Auditorium in a Division II semifinal. And it's going to be the Yellow Jackets taking on top seeded Mount Abe for the championship on Saturday here in Berry. This one was a dandy. I want to tell you, this is just unbelievable basketball to me. It's what high school basketball is all about at the Berry Auditorium.